Here's the Pioneer Valley. I'm Laura Wendelowski, and I have the pleasure to be the director of Leadership Pioneer Valley. I want to thank all the colleagues, employers, um, organizations that have supported these teams for being here um, and supporting our graduates through this intensive, enlightening, and sometimes frustrating process. I also want to recognize our steering committee members. Um, if, if you're here today, can you stand up or wait? I also want to recognize our chair, David Woods, who has been the beacon and shining light of this organization um, for the last almost four years. David is hiding in the back. I want to recognize Lynn Shell, our other staffer, who's in the back working really hard at the registration desk. <laughs> Thank you. And I also want to recognize our alumni from last year who are here. Can, can those of you who are here raise your hand, stand up? <laughs> Ten months ago, the members of this class took a leap of faith for themselves, their careers in this region, into this unknown process. Um, and I want to give them the credit for taking the first step on their leadership journey. And as you know, many of them had already begun that journey. But that journey doesn't end today. This class has continually supported one another and pushed themselves to be better and helped us to improve this program throughout. We are extremely proud of each of them. Today we're going to recognize their accomplishments, but first they're going to present their team projects and I'm going to talk a little bit about how those got pulled together. Um, just a few housekeeping things. The this program portion, the project presentations, will go from now until roughly 4 o'clock. Then we're going to break for a reception, which is going to be out on the patio because it's not going to rain. Okay? And if it rains, there's a covering. So we're covered, literally. Um, the ladies' room is down the hall and to your right. Men's room is downstairs. Um, if any of you get a ticket, they're not supposed to be ticketing from the campus police, just bring them to me or to um, the Smith person and they will take care of them and make them go away. Okay? So I just want to mention that. Um, after the reception, we're going to go downstairs to the downstairs room for the commencement. And at that point, we will be giving out the certificates of graduation for all of our graduates. Oh, and my Starbucks is here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. All right. So this class of leadership, Pioneer Valley, of 39 participants, began with us at a retreat um, last September. It was a rainy day in the Berkshires, and they didn't know what they were in for. And I think they're still having flashbacks to <laughs> some of the Tai Chi exercises and other things that we did. But they stuck through it, and in the end, they've become better leaders as a result. Last October, we gave them a list of about a dozen broad action items from the Plan for Progress, from past projects from Leadership Pioneer Valley, and from some nonprofit proposals. And we charged them, kind of Iowa caucus style, to create teams of six to 10 people to create a project and go make a difference. These folks, lobby, debated, cajoled, um, grab people from other teams to finally come up with the six teams that are going to present today. These teams met probably about two or three times a month and then over the last few weeks I think they were meeting twice a week or so to really make these projects happen and to, to refine them um, and make sure that they were all that they could be. They worked together to refine their mission, their goals, and scope to create a project that would make it an impact in the time allotted, and that's not easy because they had huge goals for what they wanted to do for the Valley. Each team will have 15 minutes today to brief you on their projects and their process. So I'd like to introduce the first team to come up, and that's the Wu team, and they worked on higher education, so.
good afternoon. We are the Woo Team. Leadership Pioneer Valley provided the opportunity for eight intelligent, creative, and powerful women to work together on their shared passion for higher education. We named ourselves Wu from an ancient Asian dialect which translated into doctor or healer. We were women ready to improve the health of our education system. We shared a core belief that all students should have access to higher education. We knew there were roadblocks, the application process, existing resources, or lack of knowing what was available or possible. Many families did not have a personal history with higher education and needed models and mentors to help navigate their way. Our mission became clear, to empower students and families, giving them the necessary tools to find their own path for success in higher education. We identified three goals. To help students understand their learning strengths and challenges, to provide simple and clear information, and to form partnerships and collaborations. We envisioned a website called Valley Cabs. You'll find one of these cards on your seat. We felt this would serve as a vehicle for individuals to inspire them to create, achieve, believe, and succeed. Our website would provide helpful information and links to support systems. As an added feature, we included personal stories of struggles and successes to inspire and encourage others to pursue their dreams. Our team divided into two groups, one to work on website design and the second to create the stories through video footage and podcasts. We developed a logo, uncovered resources, built a website, and identified five courageous individuals whose stories were heartfelt and motivating. Our team successfully completed all aspects of the project, including raising several thousands of dollars to fund our website, videos, and scholarships. Today, our presentation will include a skit that will introduce you to a high school guidance counselor and the frustrations for students and families, a tour of our website, a sample of one of our stories, awards for our participants, and recognition of our sponsors. Our recurring theme was believe and you can succeed. Now, how does someone find their own path to higher education? Miss Watson, Miss Watson, I need to meet with you. Roshonda, what's going on with you? Oh my God, I heard I have to take math um, over summer school, and I, I really want to go to college, and I heard that I need to have stop for a Jackson. second, stop for a second. You know what? Here you go. Here's a book. This will help you to, to access college. Miss Watson. Yes, baby. That's that's all I can do for today. So unhelpful. How am I gonna find my own way? Come on, girls. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Come on. We're here because this is important. I don't want to be here. I know, but honey, unfortunately for your future, we gotta get this thing popping. And I don't want to do homework. Yeah. You don't want to do homework? Oh, gosh. hi, Miss Watson. Hi. How are you? Good. Hi. What's your name, by the way? My name is Tracy. I'm oh. here to get information, like sit down and talk to you. Nice to meet you. Hi. I have one in high school. One in middle school, they're they're driving me nuts, but I need information oh, okay. on how to get them to the next level of college you because know. it's like so so many challenges out no, there. You're right, you're right. Can, can we sit down and talk about it? I'm sorry, what are you saying? I mommy, this is a waste of time. I'm a freshman. Why do I gotta do all this right now? I cause we have to prepare <laughs> now for the future. Too many challenges out there. You, you guys, know, you please tell me. You know, Miss Tracy, here you go. This will help you too. I bet you'll find some some information that can help well, you. I thought the guidance counselor like 
sat with us. You see the amount of work that I have to do? There's a lot on here. I'm sorry. Oh, so we have to read all this? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's go get busy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wait. What's this? Bellycabs.org? Oh. We gotta see. Look that up. How is that gonna help us? Oh. Let's go. Let's go check this out. Thank you, ladies. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeanette Gordon, and I am excited to be here to discuss Team Room's processes, but to highlight the features and intent of our website. Subsequent to accurately identifying the challenges in higher ed throughout our communities, Team Wu needed to depict the final product and processes that would target these said essential issues. Therefore, the initial and process entailed vigorous strategic planning. What is our project? Who is our audience? Negotiation regarding final product. Finalize, create and finalize our mission and vision and delegation of tasks. Once we identified that a website would be our final product, the next process entailed connecting with the experts in the technological field and collaborate with partners. Among these experts, we are extremely grateful to the current LPV class members that assisted, Andrew Maxwell, the director of IT for Mass Mutual, Peter Ellis from DIF Design, Pat Spradley from Springfield Public Schools, and Erica from US Fire. These individuals were essential to our process. Now, if you could focus to the screen, please. We'd like to highlight some of the features. Uh, the website team's focus was content, logo, create the call for cause, oversee final edits of the website, coordinate donations, and create the bus cart. If we could click on to the uh, parents tab. Our parents tab provides resources and information as to what parents need to encourage and support their children through their educational journey. Our financial resources page is currently work in progress, but we have the basic resources and links to local scholarships and uh, the overall process for financial aid. And our home page contains videos, which Krista will address shortly, and also correlates uh, and highlights what our youth needs um, and the current trends that are, that are uh, in our communities. So now I turn it over to Krista. Thank you. The second element of our project was a storytelling component. It consists of a video and a podcast. The video is two minutes in length, and it does an introduction for each of our participants. If you're interested in hearing more about their stories, you can listen to a podcast which lasts approximately 15 minutes. Each team member was asked to nominate someone from the community that they felt had they'd been inspired by their higher education journey. Five participants were selected that could speak to different obstacles that they overcame in their higher education journey. We have a couple of participants here today, and we'd like to ask them to come up and join the Wu team. Come on, guys. This is Michael Alves, and this is Joseph Harris. Thank you, guys. <laughs> they really were an integral part of our project. At the end of April, we met for two days for a video shoot at the Northampton Community Television, which is a fantastic community resource. We hired On Your Feet Entertainment to help us with the technical aspects of our shoot. The participants, actually, we asked them to select their interviewer, and they met for approximately an hour, for an hour interview, which was taped. Being present for the interviews was one of the most rewarding experiences for the video team. It was a very emotional and in inspiring experience, I think, for all of us. We're deeply grateful for each of the participants tr for trusting us with their stories. It really meant a lot to us. We would like to share one of those videos with you. This is Luis Santiago's Higher Education Journey. My name is Luis Sandrell. Um, I'm 26 years old. I was uh, raised in between Chicky and Holyoke. In terms of um, education and kind of promoting education, 
Um, you know, my mom was always working, um, and my grandma didn't really know much about school. So unfortunately, growing up, you know, we always got the, um, you have to go to college, it's important to go to college, but we really didn't, there wasn't any expansion on that. Homework in middle school was a joke, and I was like, no, you know. Um, and I don't think people realize the importance of homework, because as I noticed that when I started doing homework, um, I started finding class a little easier because the homework was the practice. And I don't think many times a student see it as that. I think oftentimes we see it as this additional thing that the teachers want to give us. Um, but it really does help with the academics, you know, and I found going through the classes, I found it easier and I was able to engage better and really understand the material. Um, so yeah, do your homework. I knew that I would want to be in a helping profession um, and that was kind of always in the back of my mind as I moved through college. And for me, for me it's very important to be a first generation student because not only do I set the bar, but I could be an example for my sisters or my brother or anyone in my community that can identify with me in some way and thinks, oh well, maybe I can't make it or I won't make it through school or I'm not smart enough, you know, I had those thoughts. And if anyone could identify with that, um, and if I can touch someone's life or kind of impact someone to um, to want to pursue higher education, then for me that's very gratifying. I'm Luis Santiago. This is me on education. Believe and you can succeed. of our project was a fundraising campaign. We had two goals. The first goal was to raise money for, to be able to pay for the technical services such as the website and the video production. The second goal was to establish a scholarship fund. To date, we have raised close to $5,000. We would like to thank the following organizations for their generous support. Samantha Edwards from Aarons, Helen Calton Harris from City of Springfield's Health and Human Services, Mary Wallachie from the Davis Foundation, Terry Dietz from Dietz & Company Architects, Leda Cartagena from Partners for Community and New England Farm Workers Council, Dora Robinson and Ray Berry from the United Way, Kirk Smith from the YMCA, and also through individual donations. At this time, we've partnered with the Dunbar YMCA. We are lucky to have Ms. Janice Watson as part of our project team. Where is Janice? <laughs> Behind me. That doesn't help. <laughs> she has volunteered to incorporate the maintenance of the website into one of the Dunbar's existing programs. We've also partnered with You Aspire. They are an organization that assists with educating parents and students on college ac access and scholarships. So speaking of scholarships, today we are proud to announce that this, that this year's recipients of the Valley Cab Scholarships are Michael Alves, <laughs> Joseph Harris, <laughs> Roshana Griffin, Tamika Heathman, and Luis Santiago. We wanted to honor each of the video participants for their dedication and perseverance through personal, financial, and academic challenges. They have achieved, believed, and succeeded. The WU team would like to thank you for this opportunity to present valleycabs.org to you. We are excited to position ourselves to be the hub of higher education resources and stories in the Pioneer Valley. Please, if you please contact Jeanette Gordon from our project team. <laughs> through our website if you would like to um, share your links on valleycabs.org if you'd like to share your higher education story with us or if you'd like to make a tax deductible donation <laughs> on a pers more personal note for us I believe that my new teammates would agree with me that it has been a challenging and rewarding experience <laughs> for those of us who were sponsored by our employers we are honored to that you selected us. And we hope that we have met and maybe even exceeded your expectations. We would also like to thank Laura Wondolowski and Lynn Schell from Leadership Piner Valley and all their hard work. Any 
questions? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I also want to thank all the sponsors of this team. Um, I'm just astounded by all the fundraising that they did to get that amazing website off the ground. And thank you to everybody who shared your stories. Yes. It takes a lot to share your story um, and your struggles, and they're so helpful at getting other people to where they want to go. And so uh, thank you for inspiring, and thanks for being part of this. We really appreciate it. So thank you to Lou. So shifting gears, the next team I'm going to introduce out of are the Titans. The Titans focused on casinos, that, that something we probably have never heard about in this region. So they wanted to start a regional conversation on casinos, so I'm going to introduce them up at, and the Titans team. Team Titans, and um, we're made up of six members of Leadership Pioneer Valley with, from um, all over the Pioneer Valley. We are, uh, have diverse backgrounds. We are made up of an attorney, a company COO, a director of operations, an entrepreneur, a managing director, and a bank vice president, <coughs> assistant vice president. Um, we took on the task, uh, the vast project of starting a regional conversation on the impacts of a casino coming to Western Massachusetts. And the project is the first step in a process that will continue <coughs> to narrow and um, as final decisions are made about where the casino will be built. To gather data on how the community felt, the issue is being addressed currently. We developed a 15 question survey that went out to hundreds of residents across the Pioneer Valley. We ended up with several hundred completed surveys with interesting results. And our PowerPoint will share some of the results of our survey and our recommendations of next steps. And this is our first slide, and it's going to show where our responses came from based on their hometown. Um, this was the lowest response rate. This is the moderate. And then these towns had the highest response rate at the end, with the four highest being Longmeadow, Springfield, Wilbraham, and Northampton, which we thought was interesting. Um, that's where, so it came from all across the Pioneer Valley. Tony. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, up next are the results of our online survey that we provided throughout the region. Uh, the survey defines specific areas uh, that were targeted government, nonprofit, private, education, and healthcare. Uh, one of the questions we had was. Uh, People have different opinions about whether a casino should be located in their communities. And as you can see from the results, it's pretty even. Uh, there's a strongly in favor to strongly oppose. And so we're kind of surprised the scale is fairly even like that. Next question, do you feel you have a good understanding of the effects a casino might have on your city or town? Uh, believe it or not, a lot of people feel that they do have a good understanding of the casino. Um, however, when you talk to people on the street, sometimes they don't feel so uh, so sure about that. Uh, this next section here, we conducted some interviews on the street to go along with our survey. I think you sum it as a whole is a pretty close community, and it won't have any negative effects with regards to the casino. Affected that much either way. Yes. I think that um, it could enhance the um, travel and tourism in Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, but I have concerns that it could impact the arts in a negative way. I think that the casino will make Longmeadow more desirable place to live because I think that Longmeadow, uh, as 
attracts the socioeconomic class of people who think that casinos is a fun recreational activity. So the bar, if there's any song that out, might lose out due to the fact any, you know, couple, married couple, um, anyone who wants to offer drinks would go to the casino get some free drinks instead of going to the bar to support them all the businesses. I think it'll still maintain a small community and I don't feel like Unless the casino was right in the town, um, I think it's still going to be separate. In the beginning, we'll make Springfield a more desirable place to live. I'm concerned about the long-term effects. I would apologize for that. On this other slide we have is, uh, do you think that the casino will make the city or town any more or less desirable place to live? And again, there's two groups of people. There's neutral and less desirable, so that's pretty even. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Donald Mitchell, and uh, I'll be conducting the uh, next section in this uh, presentation. And hopefully we'll have some uh, luck with our interviews. <coughs> so um, do you feel you have a good understanding of the effects a casino might have on the Pioneer Valley as a whole. Uh, so as my uh, colleague said here, we conducted the survey. Uh, most of the folks felt they had a good understanding of uh, the effects a casino might have in their area, in their region. Um, one of the other things that we also looked at, what we, I'm sorry, one of the other things is that, uh, no, that's the slide coming up, I'm sorry. Um, is the slide show ready? Yeah. yeah. And here's some of the footage from, again, some of the interviews that we conducted. Maybe hit it again. Uh, do you feel you have a good understanding of the effects of the casino might have on the Pioneer Valley as a whole? <coughs> I think that's a, a difficult question because most of the time what we're hearing about is the specific areas, whether it's going to be West Springfield or Springfield. And I don't think that they've done a good job, anybody's done a good job of, of how it would affect the, the valley as a, as a whole. I do feel like I understand the effects that the casino of on East Long Meadow. Yes, I think the effects would be um, adverse. I'm concerned. I think I have a pretty good understanding of the effects the casino might have on both Long Meadow and Oakland. I believe I do. I know that it will bring more, let's say, consumerism. Okay. Of the town. Okay. Uh, it'll definitely bring up the economy. I have an idea of what um, some of the different casinos are proposing. So one, of the, one, of, one of the things that uh, you know I've been involved in the chambers of commerce and have heard a few presentations from the casinos, so I have a, an idea of what they propose to bring to the, to the table. Yes, I feel I feel I do have a good understanding of the effects it has on the Pioneer Valley as a whole. It will create jobs. Thank you. So one of the other questions that we asked in our survey was how did you get your information? And so one of the things that we recognized throughout the course of this process is that most of the information has been subjective. Uh, so you've had a lot of the information that's been distributed by the casinos uh, or the parties that had vested interests. Um, so again, we felt that there was no objective voice uh, that provided an outlet and informed information to uh, residents and participants in the Pioneer Valley. And so I believe this next clip will um, indicate some of the uh, responses we got from uh, the folks that we interviewed on their information uh, regarding your information regarding casino. 